Okay, this is part, this is the G part, and this is G15, 16, and 17. You already saw how we make this part with freezer paper. You also saw that we had that double seam allowance, that second seam allowance on the outside of the circle. So I will demonstrate how that works. And I already made the star G15. G15 is made in the same way as the first star A1. So I didn't show it because tutorials of the same is not nice to watch over and over again. So this is the star G15, G16 and G17. My first step, I will pin the star point seams and the mark of G16 on top of each other, ease in the rest, and then I show you with the, uh, the freezer paper template what we do next to cut that perfect seam allowance because I know and I can tell you I have made a lot of circles that there is a moment that the fabric will crap from the outside and if you do not have extra fabric it is extremely hard to make the perfect circle but I will explain it when we are that far so the first step what we do we position the star in the right circle um, in the right position pin the marks on top of each other machine base them and then we ease in the rest and then I come back with my template to show the next step okay what I've done so far um, I machine base the intersections of the stars and the star point seams and the marks here and here and here and you know every time a star point seam is in fact one of your marks and they will match the marks in your circle so I machine base them with a regular stitch and I've pinned them and again it is just the same what we have done with A1 and A2 and A2 with A3 it's the marks they will match you machine base them and then you ease in the rest and although it is a solid circle the technique is still the same what is different is what we have done what we will do after this one at this moment I have stitched my star into the background of G16 and as you can see this time I have pressed my seam into the direction of the blue and I know it is maybe uncommon but I have the feeling that if I press my star point seams into this piece the star is a little bit more puffy and I think she shows much nicer than if I press my fabric the star fabric into the solid circle but my next step we have to get rid of that second seam allowance that goes around it remember that we have the second seam allowance on the outside because I know that this part will grab fabric and that means I'm running out of fabric on this side so what I do now I cut off and I already started the seam allowance from the inside curve and the reason is if I do this I can align her to the black fabric or to the blue fabric and I can work even more precise and estimate where I have to put her so what I do I have a small scissor, it works a little bit easier, easier, and I cut that inside, the inside seam allowance from my freezer paper template. Remember that I mentioned, don't throw it away because we will need it. Well, this is the moment. Okay, <coughs> excuse me, the marks will match. At least that's what I hope for and I think she looks pretty good so what I do now we'll press her very gentle just line her up as best as I can and I press my freezer paper template onto the fabric Now I take her to my cutting mat and I will cut her and then I show you the next step because that is the moment that we have to bring the marks onto the fabric because we have G17 that is the beautiful coral one that goes around it and again it is the same method but first I want to show you how this one works so we make the star we place her into the background of G16 then we cut off from our paper piece template the inside seam allowance we bring the piece back onto the fabric we match the marks and then we cut off 
that second seam allowance on the outside and we will have the perfect piece the piece that we need to match the seams and the marks in the coral G17 okay at this moment I'm cutting off that second seam allowance from the outside and as you can see we stay exactly on the line because now I want that perfect quarter of an inch seam allowance I think this is a wonderful thing to work with it is easy but it's precise and that's what we need for a quilt of this level it has to be as best as we can we're almost there okay so this is it because we use freezer paper it is a little bit harder it is a little bit harder to bring the marks onto the fabric so what I do I have my tiny scissor and I make a small tiny cut again you can see it's about an eighth of an inch in the seam allowance that is more than enough so instead of marking her with a marking pen or a regular pen I make tiny little notch in my piece about an eighth of an inch could be a little bit smaller but an eighth of an inch is fine don't make them longer because then you create a problem but an eighth of an inch it is fine okay we're there so now I can take off the freezer paper from my piece and I can show you a beautiful piece without any problems oh. and I will do it very gentle a lot of bias on the outside okay so what do you think of this we have the first piece it's a beautiful solid circle without any problems and now we need the second part okay so what we do now it is the right side facing up and again the largest part of the coral circle will match the smaller side of your turquoise and the smallest part of your coral circle will match the widest part of the turquoise so I will do it again my marks will match the marks that I have here in this piece I will baste them and then I will pin them and I will stitch them and then I come back with the final results because again the technique is still the same this is part G G15, 16 and 17. I already stitched her into the background and if I turn her you can see that I press my fabric, my seam allowance into the turquoise G16. So this time all seams go into the previous piece. What we do now, as you know, we still have that second seam allowance on the outside of G17 because again when we stitch this part in here it will cut fabric from the outside so that little bit of wiggle room that we have in G17 could be very helpful as you also can see I already cut off the second or the inside seam allowance so it gives me the ability to line her up very nice and much easier than in a different way so she is a little bit bulky but that will be fine presser on top of the fabric try to avoid the center of your star then we go to the outside okay well, not that bad it's just a little bit but even a little bit what you see here if you only have a quarter of an inch you have three sixteenths left and that already makes it harder to get that perfect circle that we need for the outside seams so what I do now I take it to my cutting mat and I take my rotary cutter and I cut exactly that second seam allowance from the piece and I will have a perfect G17 and a perfect seam allowance on the outside that will match with the white background fabric when we are that far in eighths um, 
in seven or eight months. Okay, we're so. almost ready. And so I take this off. Okay, the only thing we do now, we cut off that second seam allowance from our piece here. And now we have the little marks. And again, it is hard to mark with a marker or with a pencil because the freezer paper is attached to the fabric. So what I do, I make the tiny cuts, what I've done before. Again, it's about an eighth of an inch. And that is enough, don't worry. If you stay in that safe zone of an eighth, be very careful. But an eighth of an inch is okay. Don't go too deep. And if you bring your marks onto the fabric, that is the moment that you can take off the freezer paper template. We don't need her anymore. But you can see that we have a very nice piece. She's flat. We have our two months ready because I have I have a placer on the floor. Are you ready, Bridget? So what I have now, two months. This is my G. And there is my, my first month. This is our first month. What do you think of this?